The Floor Academy podcast is sponsored by Trelama, the trade labor marketplace, where businesses can find skilled trade labor, such as flooring installers, and where flooring installers and other skilled tradespeople can find permanent or project work. You can set up your profile at trelama.com, T-R-A-L-A-M-A.com, or download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play. And remember, Trelama is always free for skilled tradespeople. Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Phoenix, Arizona. We are here to talk with flooring professionals from all across the country about the issues that matter to you. I want to encourage you to learn while you earn. This week's guest is Lori Davidson. Lori owns and operates Davidson Wood Flooring in Atlanta, Georgia. Starting out at 15 as a way to help his mom and going full-time at 17, Lori has gained 30 years of experience in the hardwood floor industry. It wasn't until he got involved with classes in the online community that he saw his career really start to take off, though. Listen in as we discuss his humble beginnings, why you shouldn't ever be afraid to ask for help, and how you can help better the industry. Lori Davidson, are you there? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Um, we don't really have an agenda on this one, and I, I kind of like that. I want to like it, I generally freeform it, anyways. But we're just going to see where uh, y- your story kind of takes us. We talked a little bit the other day and scheduled this up, um, and I, I think we'll be able to find a couple of good things to rattle on about and people should be entertained but uh let's let's start with the overview of of who you are what you do why you do it and how you started doing it okay um well that's a vague question there that could take the whole hour uh, there um, we go good <laughs> i uh i started when i was 15 years old um in atlanta i've been in atlanta my entire life never transplanted or gone anywhere else um a friend of mine's grandfather uh, used to do hardwood flooring and me and my friend would decide to go run around and do what kids do. And uh, they'd always leave the door open for us. The only problem was you had to go to work left over. So <laughs> I got into hardwood, you know, by, you know, just him making me go to work. And I've, you know, here I am 30 some odd years later and still at it. So, um, you know, just what I love to do, man. I'm owner of Bates and Wood Flooring. Uh, we're a fairly new company. I've been a professional lead for most of my life, uh, pretty much going in and, running crews for companies, um, did that so I could spend time with my kids. I didn't want the hassle of having to run a business and running around doing estimates and worrying about guys. And, you know, I just wanted to kind of see my kids grow up and play sports and enjoy myself. So that's kind of where we're at, you know, I mean, love what I do, uh, run a Facebook group, love that. And that's, uh, one of my passions. So, you know, just a floor nerd, man, like you. I think I've heard you say that several times. So yeah. A big floor nerd. That pretty much. Um, eat, sleep, and breathe it, I guess. I, I, hopefully, oh, I, yeah. I, hopefully I don't breathe in too much, though. It's bad for you, I hear. <laughs> well, you know, we have masks. Well, some of us have masks. Not yeah. all of us. Some yeah. of us have masks. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let's... So you started at 15. So I like how did that how did that journey kind of go? I mean, you know, you said like they left the door open, but they were going to put you to work. And, uh, you know, what was the what was the interest, the draw? Like what kept bringing you back? Um, money back in the day. Um, I grew up in an income based housing um, complex in Atlanta and uh, we were broke, you know, a single parent home. And my mom worked really, really hard. But me and my brother, she tried to give us all the best of everything. And, you know, we. You know, we didn't like seeing her work like that. So mm-hmm. money, you know, being able to help out helped a lot. You know, being able to give her some money and, you know, being able to take care of myself without her having to struggle so hard to do it, that really meant a lot to me when I was younger. So okay. that, and I just, I loved it. You know, I mean, first time I ever saw Hardwood Floor, it's a funny story. I looked at it and I saw all the individual boards and I was like, wow, is that like, they roll this out and then like pull some strings or something and it all goes tight. Is that how this happens? <laughs> it was like, no, it goes in board by board. And I said, there's no absolute way this goes in board by board. And you know, it did. So, but I thought, man, this would take, the room was probably 300 feet. I said, this would take a month to do. And he was like, no, it takes a few hours. So it blew my mind, <laughs> you know, Very cool. from that point, I just, you know, I mean, that's, I just love it. You know, I'd scraped in walls for about a year. Um, when I first started, I, 
quit high school. It really wasn't working out for me. I was wasn't a good kid. I you know didn't listen a lot, so I was always in and out of trouble. Okay. So work work was good for me. You know, it helped to calm me down. It helped to keep me you know out of jail and you know out of trouble. So, but I scraped in walls for a year. That was my job. I scraped every single in wall with a one inch red devil scrape. So I don't know if you've ever done any scraping. You don't sand floors, do you, Kyle? Uh, I I did for about three months, but I didn't do a whole lot. Oh. I, I I did a lot of palm sanding. I did some scraping very poorly. Um, couldn't couldn't sharpen it to save my life. Did a little bit of edging, probably very poorly. Um, helped stain a little bit. I, my my experience is very very limited, but uh, I uh, scraping is no fun, that's for sure. And so to do it for a, a year, <laughs> man, yeah. Well, even natural jobs, you know, when we didn't have to do it, he would do it just because he needed to keep me busy. So, but that was my job. I would go around, I would scrape them walls, I would play the floor, and I would set nails. And that kept me going for about a year. And then they finally put me on an edger after about a year, year and a half. And uh, I loved that. I was super fast at it. Loved doing it. I could get in my head, you know. I, I like to think a lot, so I could get in my head and just edge all day long, you know. Mm-hmm. They put one big machine behind me, one big machine in front of me, and, you know, I would just they keep me busy pushing me all day long. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and then, you know, I slowly got into uh, working for – other people, the old man that I was with, um, I kind of outgrew him. So I went to work for some other people and just really saw some crazy stuff in Atlanta. You know, like I said, over 30 years, I've seen so much happen in this industry from, well, from manual nailers. That's what we were using when I first started, uh, the pneumatic nailers, going from split drum big machines that you had to just buff and buff and buff and buff to get right to, you know, the new belt machines and planetaries and it's just mm-hmm. it's amazing i love i love how it's evolved it's really um it's really a trade that you can just really get yourself deep into you know i mean there's so many aspects of it that you just you never stop learning you know? yeah. you're always learning something well and I that's what are. i really like about it now yeah that's what i really like about it now is learning aspects i never get bored you know you, I mean? and if i do get bored i just look at john urema's work and you know, and I'm inspired again. So well, you kind of you, you you broke up a little bit. There. I don't know if you moved away from the mic or something like that. Oh no, I'm sorry. What what part didn't you catch? Uh you said you let you love it, and you were inspired. You like if you got bored with it, you're inspired by somebody's work, but it was kind of muffled. Yeah, John Urema. I don't know if you're familiar okay. with his work or not, but anytime I get you know a little burnout, I just start flipping through his stuff, and it just brings me right back to the excitement that I had just before so okay i just love the trade i love the trade i love the people there's good people in this trade too i've met some really fine folks doing hardwood flooring yeah that's really blessed yes i've i've got no complaints about the friendships that i've made in the in the flooring community whether it's okay hate me okay look i'm friends with thailand's dollars i'm friends with carpet guys i'm friends with luxury vinyl plank guys i i I know them all because that that is what this podcast takes but there's good people in flooring throughout, and they will back you up to the ends of the earth as long as you're doing the right thing. It's it's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. So let's let's talk about the technology a little bit because that that's an interesting thing. So you know you were using manual nailers and split drum machines, and you're having to buff everything. And now you know I see a lot of the comments in, in the groups going, "Well, you don't need to do anything. You know, you can come in and you can you can muck it up with the." with the big machine as long, as long as you're not putting huge drum marks in, right? And then you take the planetary out and you go to town and then maybe maybe you have to palm sand the edge if you really suck with an edger and, and you've got this amazingly flat floor. But you were doing it with edgers and split drums and maybe a palm sander and, and a scraper. And so what what's your take on what the technology has done versus like you can do it without it, but it, is it better? You know, like, it... yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, it's, uh, it, that, that's a weird one there, Kyle. If you're like me and you've been doing it for a really, really long time, you have your, your old ways that you're really stuck into mm-hmm. like, um, you know, scraping in walls. A lot of guys don't believe in it. Uh, you know, Daniel Boone, one of the best teachers out there, he teaches to scrape in walls because he's old school. You know what I mean? he, calls the palm sander a jitterbug. That's how old school he is. So, I mean, it's, you know, one of those things where um, I think that all these new techniques are really good and they can really help you make a floor look better quicker. Um, but I think that you really have to be good at the essentials. You have to be good at the big machine in order for the planetary sander to 
to go right. If not, it's bouncing everywhere. It'll not chatter the teeth out of your head if you have a floor that's, you know, not really level. It's okay. just horrible to try to run it. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, it's, you know, the old techniques are good. I hope that people never move away from doing old techniques like, you know, hand sanding. And, you know, when you do repairs, you use a lot of old school techniques. Um, but this whole concept of all you have to do is just go buy a spider or go buy an Epic HD. And then you can basically just throw one coat. I mean, you know, one cut on the floor and then planetary it to death. Um, I'm, I'm a little not on board completely with all that, but, um, you know, I think it's good. I think it's, I think it's nice. I think that, uh, I think the floors look better than they did back in the day because of it. But as far as those things just being the answer all, I, I think that we should never get away from old techniques mm-hmm. because, that's truly when it all comes down to it. You know, that machine could break in the middle of a job. You know what I mean? And if you're not trained with these older techniques, then you're looking at each other going, oh, my God, what do we do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Most of us have customers out of our house. They're on vacation. We have a deadline to meet. So, you know, you can just pull off the old buffer and, you know what I mean, throw some pads on and go to town. But a lot of guys, you know, if they don't have that planetary machine, then they're blaming their bad sanding on not having the proper equipment. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a crutch, I think, for some people. But, you know, it's good. There's a lot of younger guys out there that are phenomenal. I mean, they're they're so ahead of the game right now that in 20 years, there's no telling the stuff that they're going to be doing. It's mm-hmm. going to be absolutely incredible. And I look forward to seeing that. But as far as technology goes, Kyle, you know, it's, uh, it is good. And the new machines, like I said, they're all fine and good and all great and everything. But... I think that everybody should learn old school techniques and then take these new techniques and then, you know, help, help them to be better, not, yeah. not to do the job for them, but help their technique to be better. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. Right. right? If, you, if you don't know the basics, if you don't have a good foundation and you don't know how the basic tool set works, then all of the technology advancements with the planetary standards and whatnot aren't going to help you. Because, like you said, if that machine breaks down and you can't get a one on loan from somebody else in town or you can't get one in quick enough, you got to be able to go back to basics and, and do it with the other tools you have. So, yeah, it's, it's not doing you any favors if that's all you rely on, in my opinion. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like, but they're, but they're great. I mean, like I say, I use them. You know I mean, I don't use those plantation centers on my thing jobs maybe 50% of the time. Um a lot of the floors that we do um, are newer, or they're resands. They really did two, two good cuts on a big machine and a planetary, or three good cuts on a big machine and a buffer will do. You know what I mean? The exact same mm-hmm. thing. So, I'm not big on running buffers all day long. So, like I said, if I want something to look like furniture, I'll break out the hydro sand. If not, then like I said, I'll do it old school, and you know my floors look. They, all my work is referral work. I don't even advertise. So. You know what I mean? Um, apparently, we're doing something right if they, people like them. So Ooh. that's all it matters at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Somebody could look at a floor that looks really, really good and find something wrong with every single one of them. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. there's there's flaws in every single thing that we do. But you know, correct. Nobody's that's perfect. Just the business. But that's well. It, no. Look, it's a it's a natural object, right? Like it it should have flaws in it, in my opinion. Like mm-hmm. y- you know, sometimes. Look, those pictures online, they're beautiful of those super flat planetary sanded floors, but you can almost get it too flat. (laughs) If if you you want that, then you might as well just get a fake floor. Yeah. There used to be a little something wrong. (laughs) Well, there was a thread a while back where people were talking about how a customer was upset that the floor looked so flat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It didn't, it looked like, you know, it looked fake. It looked artificial because it was so flat. So I agree. So Jake, one of the admins on our group, he um he likes to leave a little bit of wave, but his floors are phenomenal. I mean, I don't know how he does it, but he leaves just enough in there to where it looks like a like it came off a tree. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Instead of looking like marble. So, and I dig that. But that's like I said there again. That's the cool thing about this business is that everybody's different. Everybody's Correct. style's different. Everybody's saying's different. I've probably worked Kyle for twenty, thirty companies in my lifetime. I worked for everybody. You know, because back in the day it was. You worked for this guy, he didn't pay you. He went to work for this guy, he didn't pay you. He went to work Jeez. for this guy, he was a drunk. He, you know, started stuff with you. It was always flopping around. And, you know, we got to know, you know, everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's styles a little bit different. And once you figure out your own groove, it's um, it becomes real easy and real fun, you know, mm-hmm. to create that, to make that style that you you rely on every day. So I really dig, dig, dig that. I dig that. It's pretty cool. 
So you had made a you made an interesting point of uh, you only do referral work, like so you're doing something right, and mm-hmm. that's something I see a lot is that guys are like super proud of the fact that everything they do is referral work, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Like I would love to get all referral work and not have to generate any of my own leads. However, I know for the company that I want to build referral work will never continue to provide enough work to build. So I'll always have to do some kind of advertising. Um, Mm -hmm. What's, what's your take there? Is this like, you know, obviously um, you do. You want the referral work. So, like, are you not, are you trying to keep just you busy, you and like a crew busy? Like, where do you kind of see yourself? When yeah, you exactly. I, I, I want I want to be able to touch every floor that has my name on it. If I do a floor, if I if I go out and I sell a floor, I want to be involved with that floor in several different phases. Like, I want to be there on every job that I do. Okay. So I want the customers to see me pull up. Um, you know, money is the thing. I, I listen to your podcast, and I hear a lot of guys who are really, 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 you know, they're, they're, they've done really well for themselves. They've made a lot of money. They're making good decisions. They're businessmen. They're just... Uh, you bring, like hold me, on, hold on. You, go, go back a little bit because I was breaking up. So there, there's a bunch of guys that, you know, they're doing well for themselves, and they're making money. Yeah, um, I, I'm kind of on the other uh, other, other side of that. I I really do. I'm like I said, I'm a floor nerd, so I really like doing floors. But I'm not really concerned about making a whole lot of money. Um, I'm not real good on the business end of mm-hmm. the industry. Um, I'm not real good on selling myself. I'm a bit of a social pride, where I'm just I kind of get awkward in situations and say stupid things sometimes and smooth. Not your Laurie. Yeah. You keep breaking up, man. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me move to a different part of the house. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 You're yeah. Good. It, like, it, uh, it goes in. I don't know if like you're moving the phone or the headset. It, like it, it goes out for a second and then it comes like you come right back. But um, yeah, I'm in I'm in the North Georgia mountain. So the signal is just a little bit weird. OK, so I have to kind of like walk around my house to find a good spot. So. <laughs> go <on>. All good. <laughs> all right. So, you're not, the- you know, I, I heard you. So, all right. You're not. You're not super keen on like the business side. You, you're not always super comfortable in the house, and you'll you, you don't like sell yourself well. So yeah, you just well, it's go ahead. I mean, it's, it's not not really. I can I can sell myself. I can you know what I mean. I can I can I can sell myself because I'm passionate about what I do. And when mm-hmm. I go into somebody's house, they see that I'm passionate about what I do. So that helps me to sell myself. And as far as they want to grow and to have all these, these guys going out and doing work and, you know, having multiple crews and, you know, I'm just, my son's working with me and he's interested in that, but I'm really not Kyle. You know, I'm mm-hmm. just, I like doing floors. I like, uh, I like having enough money to, um, take care of my family. Yeah. To, um, you know, if I want to go on a trip, I go on a trip. If I want to buy something, I buy something. So, Cause I got a lot of money in hardwood. So just doing it the way I do it, you can do pretty well for yourself. But oh yeah. Just not interested in the um, in the expanding and the being, you know, you, you you want to have an empire one day, and that's great. You know, what I mean, that's that's what keeps you motivated. That's awesome. Me, I'm not really on that side. My son is, but you know, maybe when he gets my business, he'll um, take it and do something with mm-hmm. it. But you know, as far as me, I'm I'm happy just getting behind the machine, Carl. Yeah. So. No, I get it. Look, Rubbing everybody. On the floor. Yeah, so, I'm good. Every everybody's got a way that they're going to do it that works best for them. I, uh, you know, I, I get it. I I still enjoy installing floors. Like I I've, I've been able to do a couple engineered floor projects lately instead of just luxury vinyl plank, and it's been nice to do something different and and put some wood down and take a little bit longer like installing it because it doesn't just fly together and. Uh, it's brought a little bit of that passion back because I was getting like drained. And uh, it, to be honest, like it's been, I've, I've lost passion for installing, but I've gained passion because I, I like building things and I'm kind of over building floors. I want to build my business now, but there's nothing wrong with, you know, absolutely wanting to wake up and go and sand a floor or install a floor in the morning. Like everyone's going to have their way of doing it. And as long as you're out there doing the best possible job you can, you're willing to learn and you're being profitable at it, I think you're you're killing it. You know, if you can take care of your family, you're doing good. Yeah. Yeah, well I'm 
like I said, I grew up really poor, so I'm doing better than, you know, I ever thought I would be when I was mm-hmm. coming up. So as long as, you know, as long as I have strong family, strong faith and, and strong business, then I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm happy. So I think that if I got any more than that, it might burn me out. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you got into, if I got into something that I just really wasn't passionate about, it just might burn me out. And, you mm-hmm. know, I plan on doing four so I die. So I don't want to go there. Yeah. No. Take care Just of yourself. On, I'll take care of you. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Um, let's see. You've got... Uh... Oh, you just made an announcement the other day. This will come out before the end of the year, so it's still relevant. Um, you're gonna. We got a little hardwood competition that you're gonna you're yeah, throwing in the um, Real Masters of Hardwood Facebook group. Yeah, we uh, we started the Real Masters of Facebook group with the um, idea that you know that these groups could be better. You know, we could be more involved. Um, we could instead of just showing a floor or talking about water popping, we could actually have real conversations about what guys are doing, what guys are dealing with. Um, and it's turned out really well. I mean, it's done really good. But this floor of the year competition thing is, um, you know, of course we do the, the monthly floor. That kind of keeps everybody involved, you know, as long as you can keep guys, you know, you know, involved. Mm-hmm. And then you can keep interest. So um, at the end of the year, we did a floor of the year contest. Uh, last year it was super ghetto. Um, I made a little trophy um Arian from Infinity Woods uh, won the competition last year. Um, and, you know, these guys, this this page that has got these guys on there that are just, that's, they're doing things that I mean, you see. It's oh, yeah. phenomenal. I mean, these floors are just like, I mean, you just sit back and you just think, man, how in the world did they do that? But so we did the floor of the year to showcase all of that. And um, we uh, we finally got some sponsors this year, Norton, um, Loba. And you guys are helping us out, and we really do appreciate that. But it's more or less just bragging rights. You know, when you're when you're behind a machine all day, or you're installing all day, like you know, I mean, you, you know, you think, man, I'm the best at this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The board goes in just right. And you're thinking, man, I should really do this for a living. You know, and um, <laughs> we just we just want to we want to make guys we want to give them something to brag about. So that's what we do. And mm-hmm. the cool thing about the competition is that um, the, whoever wins the competition the next year has to make the trophy. So oh, okay. you have artisans that are making the trophy as well. So <clears throat> it's pretty cool. We've uh, we've enjoyed it. Yeah, I know. Really Facebook thing has been really cool. Dan Porto is the inventor of the Facebook group, so we got to give him the credit. But he started the first Masters page. And, um, you know, we... Uh, we're rocking and rolling, man. Hopefully we can take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. That's what we're trying to do anyway. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I, I'm only at where I'm at because I found those groups on Facebook. So yeah. I was able to learn a lot very quickly in a short amount of time, whether it be floor-wise, business-wise. Um, I'm fortunate that, you know, I, I was able to skip the, the hurdle of your entry questions and get in your group. And uh, I'm in there to be <laughs> able to participate and, and hang out and do my thing. Um, I still remember, you know, I, I asked you, I was like, hey, man, can I put this uh, can I put this podcast post up? You're like, yeah, one time. Don't make it like advertising. They'll hate you. And, and, <laughs> and now I just I get to go and post it every week and nobody says anything. And, you know, I get a lot of love from the group, which is is awesome. You know, I, I hope the guys are listening to more than just the hardwood guys. But even if they're just doing that, I'm OK with that. You know, there's as long as they're getting info from it and doing their thing, that's 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 fine. Yeah, no, it's been great. I mean, it's, you know, we've got the, the Bona podcast, which is good. We've got the, the National Flooring Association podcast, which is good. But, I mean, yours is more just like a one-on-one with, you know, installers and stuff. And, you know, you see people on Facebook and you're like, you know, this guy's really good. I wonder what his story is. And mm-hmm. to be able to actually hear the story is pretty cool. And we really do appreciate it. We really appreciate what you do. Yeah, it's been it's been a blast for me. You know, it gets me out there, lets me meet all the 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 who's who of, of flooring, and it lets other people, like you said, kind of in on the behind the scenes of what got them there and kind of how it works and where their thought process is. So, um, let's see a little more on the floor of the year, right? So, I I believe where we're at as it as it stands now is that uh, you threw in a hundred bucks, right? Yep, floor cat. Two hundred bucks. Oh, you th- two hundred bucks this year. I, I was broke last year. I'm gonna okay. work out a little more money. In my pocket. Got it. all right. So, so, you, in two this so year. you threw in two hundred bucks. Floor Academy's thrown yep. in a hundred bucks. I think I saw Bill from Loba Vocal come along and, and throw Tito. in fifty bucks. Yeah, well, well Tito, Tito. Yeah, okay. Tito did. Yeah, yeah, Tito threw in fifty bucks. He also gave us some, some pins, which are apparently extremely hard to come by. Okay. So, um, 
Norton, no, Nathan Kelly from Norton, um, threw in a hoodie, a couple boxes of paper, um, some Blaze Plus, uh, just all kind of cool stuff. We've got, like I said, we'll have a big package this year, and yeah, it will be a pretty per- much winner take all. So that's that's a pretty big package for one person, I gotta say. <laughs> well, yeah, and we still have another month and a half to go. So if anybody's listening out there and you want to donate, you know what I mean, it goes to a good cause. It's it's just fun, you know. What I mean, yeah. it's, it, it sucks to do a floor and then, you know, throw it into a, you know, a magazine competition or somewhere else. And, you know, it's mostly the bigger name guys who usually win those all the time. That's why Mars has 20 trophies. And, you know, it's just, this is just peers, you know, and it's nice for your peers to appreciate what you really, really do. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, it's, it's just the guys in the group who do it. You can only vote once because you can only like something one time. So it's just, you know, it, it really, it just, it's really about your peers, and that's what makes it so special. So, yeah. Last year when Arian won, he was, he was more impressed with his peers picked it than anything else. And that's what really, <clears throat> sorry, that's what really, um, makes it good for me. That's what makes it think that we're doing the right thing is what we're doing with this group. So, because a lot of the groups, like I said, they're, they're fun and you can learn a lot, but, uh, the personal, personal, uh, touch isn't there. So that's what mm-hmm. we're trying to do. We're just trying to make it more interactive and, get people involved you yeah. know, and lift guys up so no i totally agree thing. i think it's it's Lifting great you know i we had uh the last floor of the month that you did that and you you put it out there like i threw in this wall that i had done and surprisingly it got a lot of likes and i was like oh man i got a chance of like having my picture up there it was kind of exciting <laughs> but in in the end i i i lost but it, it was i was very impressed that you know there wasn't in some groups you could put something like that up and hardwood guys are their own breed and so you could get trashed on like very easily for for putting that picture out there because it's not a floor and it was it was received very well in the group and i i that says a lot about the people you have interacting within that group yeah we've uh, we've really tried to um to you know navigate uh who's you know we the the questions you got to answer, but we also look at who you are before you come in the group. You know, we're not we're trying to just keep the guys who are going to keep it professional. You know, I mean, there's no reason to bicker. There's no reason to fight. We're all doing the same thing. We all breathe the same dust. We all tote the same flooring. I mean, we're all we're all the same. When at the end of the day, so it's just nice to have a bunch of guys who who respect it. You know what I mean? And treat it right. And so far, we've been really mm-hmm. blessed that everybody has done really well as far as respecting the group and those in it. Yeah. Um, so it's actually actually we do very little. I mean, the guys who are in it make the group up, and we do very little. So it's uh, like I said, it's it's been great. We really enjoy it. I mean, I'm a nerd, so you know, it's, it's I love it. I mean, I wake up and I'm looking on my phone, and now I was reading the uh, the new guidelines for installation for fun the other night. So I mean, you know, it's I'm just a nerd. Yeah, it's pretty much it. I'm a nerd that you know just loves talking about it and doing it, and you know. So it's my life. Yeah. And all right. So when did that like nerdiness start? Because, you know, I, you were obviously attracted to it when you're like 15, you, you went out and you were doing it full time at 17 because you didn't finish high school. And I know we were talking a little bit the other day and you told me like, man, I was nothing for, for 20 years in the past 10 years. Like I've really gotten into the education and I've I've gotten into, you know, learning the standards and, and reading more and learning more. So what was that switch? What made you realize like I you were a hack essentially, right? Like you, you're doing it the wrong way and made you want to go and find a better way to do it. Um, well, that, that kind of goes along with being a professional lead for so long. When you work for other companies, um, they don't really give you a lot of leeway to do it your way. Um, so, you know, they would to get the Harvard floor magazines and they'd be laying on the tables, right? In these offices. Cause everybody was a member of the national floor association and magazines would just sit there. Nobody would ever open them. So I was like, Hmm, I'll just take them home. So I would take them home and start reading them. And I got to see people like Wayne Lee and Daniel Boone and Highlander and all these guys who were just, you know, really really excellent floor men and i'd be thinking while i was at work you know running the big machine or edging or installing or racking you know man i you know i wonder what it takes to to be one of those guys you know what i mean i wonder i wonder how hard you gotta work to be one of those guys and that's when i started realizing that when people were telling me to do it wrong i'd be like hey 
I read this, let's try this. And it started to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It started to be easier, more efficient. Um, people started to leave me alone, let me do my process, my way. And um, they made money. So they were, you know, and it was faster. So they were like, hey, you know, that's good. But the first school I went to, um, Wayne Lee reached out and invited me to a American Sanders school. And when I went to that, everything changed. My whole world changed. Um, I, I learned things that, you know, I've been doing it for, you know, almost 28 years, 29 years at that point. And um, I saw things that I was like, man, that is so easy. You know what I mean? That That <laughs> is just way, way better than what I'm doing, way easier than what I'm doing. And that looks so easy, you know, and I've been doing it wrong for all this time. I was just like, man, I've got to, I've got to start, you know, getting in this game and figuring out, you know, figuring out how to do this. And from that point on, you know, I just really, you know, I got into Facebook. Um, that was eye opening because, you know, the guys in the truck that want to talk about wood floors going back and forth to work with me. So I found a group of guys who did want to talk yeah. about wood floors and, you know, that was, that was just it. But between that and education, um, I really got passionate about doing, you know, doing better flooring, but also about learning better ways to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And between the two, it just really like uh, gave me a second wind in this business. So, and I'm riding that second wind right now and I love it. You know, I absolutely love it. It's, it's been so great. There's Facebook things and classes. If anybody listening hasn't been to school and like i said i was 28 29 years in when i went to my first school go to a school and learn from somebody that actually knows what they're talking about because most of these guys who are out here doing this have never learned the correct way to do it and they just keep spinning their wheels you know what i mean yeah so it's it's schools. it's so funny because you're not the only person that says this you, you said i went to a school and it changed my life and mm-hmm. you constantly see these arguments about certifications are stupid. Training classes are dumb. You don't need them. You just need to do this, that, and the other thing. And every time you talk to somebody that's been to one of these schools, been to a certification class, it's, it changed my career. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know why anyone can argue with that. Like, stop, just go and experience it. It's, it's one of those things. And I, I, I've, I've said it tons of times on here, but it's you go and you're you're with these other like minded individuals that are dorking out as hard as you. They're willing to sacrifice time at work in order to better themselves in an industry that they're passionate about. You make some of the best relationships that you can in the business. And you get to hang out with these people for a couple of days. Like it, the the class is like secondary, in my opinion, to the relationships that you build and the people you get to know. And then you, you put that all together and it's this top notch experience that. Yeah, the certification may not do anything for you. The, the certification is all in how you market it. OK, it doesn't matter if you're certified or not. It, that's a podcast for another time but if you market it right it can make you money but the relationships Mm -hmm. you're going to build with these people that's the reason to go Mm -hmm. exactly yeah to to have somebody better than you in your phone um is is priceless especially when you're trying to run a business because if there's a situation that i come across that i don't know about because of schools i have numbers of guys who you know i can just call and Mm -hmm. they can walk me right through any problem that i have and they do it for free you know what I mean? They they do it and they you know, and then they ask you how you're doing afterwards. So in that, that, that there's not many not many trades in the world that you can you know that you can say that everybody is most people are willing to help you no matter what Correct. without you know, asking for anything in return mm-hmm. except for just that you get better you know and that's that's awesome that makes me love this trade even more. Well, I think that's a true artisan, right? Like you want to you want to pass on the actual art form. You're not worried about somebody stealing it and making money off of it. Like you just want it to continue on into the world. Exactly. And you want it to evolve, you know, you want it to evolve and you want it to get better. There's, there was a time in Atlanta where there were 20 guys doing hardwood floors and everybody pretty much knew everybody. You could walk in the supply house in the morning and it would be the same guy every single day. Well, in the nineties, Atlanta blew up and just, you know, there's, probably uh, I can't even imagine how many floor guys there are right now but when we walk into suppliers nowadays nobody 
nobody talks. Everybody just kind of mm-hmm. does their thing. And that, that's, that's what really bothers me now. That's what I'm getting passionate about now is trying to change is that, you know, we, we are a community of extremely strong, talented individuals. I mean, to do what we do really requires, you know, a lot of hard work. It requires a lot of dedication. Um, it requires a lot of thinking. I mean, it's just, it requires a lot out of us, but, you know, as, as people. And when I go in there and I see people who don't want to talk to one another, they don't want to look at each other, they're just kind of, you know, so I, and I make a point to everybody that I see in a spot up, I say something to them. And they, most of them look at me like I'm crazy. There's a mm-hmm. language barrier sometimes and stuff like that. But I make sure to let them know that, hey, you know, I'm a lawyer. You know, nice to meet you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, where are you up to today? And, you know, it's. Uh, I, I would like for the, I would like for the industry to get back to that um, because that's, I think, back in the day, back in the 80s and 90s, it was a lot like that. Um, and I think that, that we can get back there. And, you know, it's it's just a matter of, you know, not being – you know, just being good, you know, being a good human, you know, wanting to better everybody around you and wanting to know everybody around you, yeah. you know, because that guy might not know you can get four bucks a foot to stand on the floor and he's out there still doing it for a buck 25. You know what I mean? If I can get no conversation with this guy and show him a different way, then, you know, who knows what can happen, you know? Correct. Who knows if his life would change? So There's... that's another aspect that makes us just the most beautiful trade in the world, Kyle. Yeah, I look. There's nothing wrong with other guys being able to make four dollars a square foot if they're doing it the right way and they're doing a quality job. It's only going to better the market because then the guys that are really doing top notch work, well, now you can go from four to six. So mm-hmm. it's only going to benefit everybody. Plus, you're there's always going to be the low ballers and the hacks, and they're going to exist. And it, in all reality, we need them because how do we separate ourselves and stand out? if everybody's doing top level work, you, you can't, that's a good point. That's so a really you, good point. you, you need that, that differential, but there's no reason not to try and help somebody come up. Okay. They, you can offer the help. Like you said, you can introduce yourself. You can say, hi, you can offer an opinion. You can offer some advice and it's up to them to take it, right? Like you, you can lay out the trail of breadcrumbs. They either pick them up or they, they wander off. That's their choice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it also works in other ways too. When I was getting into my own business, I was broke. I mean, I had no money. I was working for a company and I had a, uh, kind of not really a falling out, but you know, just a disagreement and I didn't have any money. And I was like, I'm just going to go out on my own. And everybody was like, well, how are you going to make a living if you don't have any tools or anything? And I was like, oh yeah, that's a good, a good point. But one of the people who I had met on Facebook groups and I reached out to in the past was like, Hey, I got some tools. Come check them out. And I was just like, wow, that's, you know what I mean? It's just, it's mm-hmm. so cool. That that's what happened, and that's pretty much what got me in business. It was Rob Cheating, a local guy, who just said, "Hey, man, you know, come, come look at some of my tools. I got some stuff I can sell you." And just really gave me a good deal and got me going. You know, Amazing. and that changed my life as well. So, networking is, is great. It's it's really really important part of the business. And I think the people who are more concerned with competition and not networking are really doing themselves a disservice. I you agree. Know, I there's. Um, you could you could talk yourself into a huge project. Um, you know, a good example and the the only one I can think of off the top of my head because I, you know, I'm not in that world a lot is uh, Sprig had all the guys come out and help him there at the at the Supreme Court, right? You know, he he brought mm-hmm. in a, a team of teams like these these were names that you would you would kill to work with, and all of these guys were there together, hobnobbing it up and and doing their thing, and so he wouldn't do that if he was afraid of competition that you Uh can't, you can't put people like that together and be afraid of competition. You can only sit there and say, I need help. And this is going to be good for the industry for all of us to work on this project together. And so it's just Uh a different mindset, I think. And that's, that's what we need, right? That's what you're saying is you go into the supply house and everyone's eyeballing each other up because you're going to go bid that other project that I just bid and you might come in a quarter cheaper. And so I'm going to bid it. 35 cents cheaper square foot. So I make sure I win it. Well, now you're racing to the bottom uh-huh. and you're not talking, you're yep. not communicating, you're not building up the the community as a whole. Everyone's like just backstabbing and hurting each other. And it's really sad to see. Yeah, it is. And Atlanta's, Atlanta's a bad market for that. Um, I've got a guy locally who will go and sand the floor for about 25 a foot, three cuts of urethane and get out of there. You know what I mean? I'm three times that amount mm-hmm. when I sand the floor. So it's hard 
you know, it's and it's hard to justify it to everyone, but you know, like you said, we need people like that. And you know, but but he won't talk to me. Like he won't sit down and have a conversation with me because he treats me as competition. When all I would like to do is sit down with the guy and say, "Hey, this is how much money you're leaving on the table." You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm still selling jobs and still staying busy. You know what I mean? Staying staying busy enough to where I, you know I'm, I'm weeks or months out. You know, yeah. so you can you can make this money. And not, you know, you can be do better for your family, do better for you. But because his mindset is, you know, you're my competition, and you think you're all this, then you know, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with you. And you know, I, I just hate to see that. You know, I just like I said, I want to see everybody come up. And, yep. You know, it, it's a maybe shame. Maybe one day. Maybe yeah. uh, you just, you know, uh, to me, it it starts with the with the helper bringing in, right? It this was mm-hmm. these guys were trained poorly because they're doing poor work. And they continue to train people poorly and they don't have necessarily the business skills or the, the craftsman skills. And so Mm -hmm. they're breeding this culture that continues to implode on itself. Whereas there's some of us out here where like, my big thing is, is if we're going to, I don't care who comes and works for me, I'm going to try and leave you better than I found you. Like you can come and work for me and want to become a, you know, astronaut, but I'm going to try and instill values in you that are going to leave you a better person and put you towards that dream. So yeah, I, I exactly. want to teach you the business skills. I'll teach you about the flooring skills. I'll, I'll teach you anything you're willing to listen to. But at the end of the day, like they have to do some work. But I think it, it comes down to the industry needs to change their mindset on what we're doing with our quote unquote helpers. And, and to me, I don't like that. I, I want to, everyone should call them an apprentice until they prove otherwise. If the person only ever shows the aptitude to be able to sweep a room and, and set nails and, you know, scrape a corner, then sure, they can mm-hmm. be a helper. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt at first. And everyone needs to be an apprentice because an apprentice is there to learn a skill and grow. And that shows, exactly. I, I think that's a, a respectful term. Like, I don't want to be a helper. Mm-hmm. That what does that mean? I carry boxes. <laughs> it is a little demeaning, isn't it? Now that I hear you say that, it is a little demeaning. You're a helper, stuff like that. But you know, so, how, how do you change that, Kyle? I mean, how do you? I mean, how do you go about changing that? And, I, I would say, as an industry, across the industry, how do you go about changing that? I got this awesome podcast called Floor Academy, and I just keep spouting <laughs> this same info off. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Great answer. <laughs> you know, but well, yeah, I, I well, do the same we'll have a conversation about that. I mean, maybe we'll bring up the Facebook and have a conversation on that. That's you know, yeah. A lot of people call them helpers. So. Well, and that's the thing, you know, I, I, I just, I'll see it online and I'll, I'll pick and choose. I called out my, my buddy JC the other day. He was like, Oh, you know, all these helpers. I was like, they're not helpers. They're apprentices. And he was like, some of them are. And I was like, all right, fair enough, but you got to give them the benefit of the doubt first. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it's just, you gotta, I, I just, I see things in it. It, 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 I catch it and I'll, I'll try and make a comment. You know, another thing that I see is all these tradesmen want respect, right? We all want to be respected. And then mm-hmm. we're in there posting pictures of half naked women on floors and, and talking about, oh, that's a really good looking floor and it, grow up. Like there's no respect <laughs> to us as tradesmen because you're being a pig. Well, yeah, that's another reason why we started the group that, that we have now is because, you know, it was some of the things that they're just, you know, I mean, but, but there again, guys want to have fun, you know, like, like, you know, like I said, this is a really hard trade. I mean, guys, you know how it is. You do floors. Guys are tired at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they do something funny, that, and, you know, and the, most guys who do hardwood the floor, not, probably not most, I don't want to, you know, discredit those who don't, but a lot of the guys do harder flooring, get into harder flooring because it's, it's just a job they can find to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like, now, like somebody says, you know what I want to do with my life? I want to do some hardwood floors. That's really, you know, where I want to go with my that's life. That's funny because that's what you're, I said. You're, you're using, <laughs> really. <laughs> then you're the unicorn. We have found the unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, the unions, I think the unions do a good job of, of giving people apprentice and journeyman. I'm not sure how the, the wording goes, but I think that's probably why they do it is so that they can give their guys a little more respect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As far as not just being a helper, but actually being, having a title and then having another title that you can move up to like the military or anything else, you know, it's, there's that, you know, chain of command that you can keep going up and going up and going up. Correct. So, that's that's really interesting. That's, that's an interesting thing too. I might try to do something like that with my helpers, like maybe set down a plan and, 
right now, so people say, when you get to here, you're this. When you yeah. get to here, you're classified as this. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Well, it that's gives them idea. something. You, well, at that point right now, you have a clear coat or a clear cut plan to give them so they know what they're working towards, what the milestones are. And then they get a title, they get a raise. And so, you know, maybe it's you can do X, Y, and Z, and here's 50 cents. And then the next one's A, B, C, and D, and here's another dollar. And, you you know, as long as they, they can meet these milestones, you get a title and you get a reward with it. And so yeah. it's it's huh. it's a better way to run a business. It's a better way to grow a, a community and keep it solid, I think. As, you know, and not yeah. every company has to have the same plan, but you just... I don't know. I, I think yeah, showing hell, guys that, you know, not every, being called the FNG is, it, it gets old, right? Like you just get ragged on. That, yeah, that one, that one really upsets me. I'm not a big fan of that one. I don't think anybody should be degraded or, or you know, termed something that, that is, is that ugly. You know, I, I really think that anybody who wants to get out here and, and try to do what we do and, and continues with it for any amount of time should get the respect of, you know, of any of our other peers. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like the terms, or I don't like people talking about, oh, my my helper sucks, and he's there. Well, your helper sucks because you're not training him right. That's why your helper sucks. So most of the time, that's going to be the case. Yeah. They're really just talking about themselves. There's, there's some kid. look, I, I suck at training. There's some people that just don't have it, right? Like, not everyone's cut out to do this. It takes it takes a special person to take the beating every day, <laughs> day in and day out. But there's, there's definitely, you're, you're right in that there's, an aspect of if you can if you could learn how to train better then you would get better results and i i fully agree with that our schools you know send them to school <laughs> yeah you know when the school runs around your time send them to school i mean go with them you know what i mean so you can you know write it off on your taxes the government will you know what i mean just less money you got to pay them so you know what i mean it's that's that's what I'm going to do with mine whenever we're three schools open back up. This year's just been crazy. Oh, yeah. and oh, my goodness. Every, the expo closed at the expo. If you've never been to the expo, either, the expo was one of the best times I've had in years. It, it was so much fun. The people are so great. The classes are great. The showroom, I mean, the, the whatever they call the, the floor mm-hmm. is incredible with all the new products and stuff. It's it's really cool. It's really, you know, it's really a good time. So, I mean, we look, I look forward to it every year. As soon as I go home, I'm planning my next trip. That's, so, and yeah. This year to be canceled was, was really hard, but maybe next year we can do it, hopefully. And hopefully the schools will get back on track and, you know, we can start educating people some more. Hopefully. I know there's some stuff that's been taking place, very, very small here and there. A lot of, uh, a couple of guys have just, not in hardwood, but I know have held classes on their own outside of Mm -hmm. like getting a cert or getting you know backed by any buddy major they're just like look i want to get together and i'm going to go over this stuff so there's there's some stuff happening um there was a big announcement that a new group um it's nafct but they changed it so it's the national academy of floor covering technicians i want to say i don't know Sonny and paul can kill me and not that's okay. I'll take that up with them. Uh, but essentially, they they changed from being a for profit organization to a non profit organization, or yeah, non profit. And now they're going to try and get a bunch of classes started right at the beginning of the year. Um, and they're trying to work with all of with everybody. They're trying to work with certified floor flooring installers, NWFA, um, the CTEF, which is a tile thing. They're they're trying to work with all these different organizations to make certifications matter and what they want to do is get enough guys certified to be able to go to manufacturers and say you need to start demanding that only certified installers do your work so that's yeah, that's an inter- yeah that's a that's an interesting development so sunny sunny callahan's with divergent adhesives you probably have them down in your area i know he's bigger in that southeastern part of the united states um mm-hmm. And then uh, Paul Pleshek is an inspector. I had him on the show a while back. So people go listen to that mm-hmm. episode. But, uh, yeah, I you know, the class is getting back. Is, it would, would be killer. Um, I, I think that's huge, right? Like we said, you just you got to go and experience it and you got to meet these people. Um, you said Wayne Lee invited you, and 
you also mentioned that you would open up the magazines and Wayne, Wayne Lee would be in the magazine. So he was like this yeah. larger than life character to you, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. The, the first time I heard from him, I kind of blew him off because I was so freaked out that he even messaged me. I was like, wow, this guy, you know what I mean? But when you get to meet Wayne, he's not like one of these bigger than life people. He is the nicest, most Christian, most down to earth guy that you'd ever want to meet. But he is so passionate. I mean, he's even made products and gave them to the industry without taking a dime off of them. I mean, who does that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He can, I mean, it's just, he's just an amazing man. He's like I said, and he, he reached out to me and that's what really made me realize that, you know, all it takes is one person reaching out to somebody, no matter how long you've been doing this and you can change somebody's entire world just by reaching out. So that's why I would encourage anybody who, you know, is in magazines or who gets covered or, you know, any of these people who people look up to just to reach out to somebody that you see, you know, coming up and saying, Hey man, you know, this is, you know, this is cool. I mean, and he had a hookup on getting me into a class for free and, you know, cause no, believe it or not, all the years that I've been flooring for all these companies, nobody ever offered. And I begged to go to schools. Nobody ever offered to send me to a hmm. school. I mean, 200, 300, 400 bucks for yeah. a school is cheap when you figure the time that I have trying to train my employees. I mean, it's, Oh, so cheap, goodness. but because because they didn't see the, the point in it, they you know they they didn't do it. But yeah, but no Wayne Wayne's been great. He's a, he is truly an inspiration to me, and you know I can't thank him enough for really getting me on the right path. He's he's a great man. So and well loved in our industry. Well, so you you've been it's been like ten years since you took that class, right? Uh, it's probably been uh, four or five. Four or five, five years. Long ago. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. All right. So Wayne and Wayne Lee invited you. And then who else was in that class with you? Because this was this, this changed well, your life. Was so. there. Yeah. Well, well, Mike was there. Um, you just had him on a little off hack. He's one of our admins and the real masters. Um, he was there. Uh, I thought, man, I've never met anybody so cocky in all my life, but you know, <laughs> he, he backs it up. So you know, he's got that going for him. But, um, let's see, uh, Frazier from, um, Charlie, uh, He's up in, I want to say, Tennessee. Um, James Petrie was there. Um, a lot of guys who were on these Facebook groups were there. And, you know, just to finally put a name with a face, and then when you go out that evening, everybody's already pretty familiar with one another. So it just makes for a really good mm-hmm. time. Like you said, you know, the camaraderie and just the networking and the hanging out and having drinks with guys who you've only read about magazines can can really do a lot for your self-esteem it can make you feel like you're a part of like you're you belong there you know what i mean so I, like i said i just i would recommend for anybody to reach out to anybody just say hey man look you know i mean i'm you know i'm no better than you i mean when i met joe rocco in fort worth i was like man your work is phenomenal dude i mean it's off the charts and he was like look man i'm no different than you i'm just a floor guy mm-hmm. i'm thinking wow man how cool is that you know what <laughs> i mean this guy could be like yeah, that's right. I'm a badass, but you know, he doesn't. He's like, you know, I'm just a floor guy like you, brother. What's up? You know, and that's just super cool. I mean, it just, like I said, it makes me want to get up and continue to be better every single day just so that I can, you know, hopefully maybe one day mean that much to somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, that would, that would probably be my goal is to be big enough for getting enough to maybe one day somebody say, you know what, that guy, you know, I looked up to him and he's super cool. That's, that would That would mean more to me than having, you know, been having five crews and a ton of money flowing yeah. in my bank. No, right? be, like you wanna... you know, I'm, I'm just a big guy on carnage on just being happy. You know, if you're happy, then everything in life is easy, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's, <clears throat> Wayne is a great guy. And if you ever get a chance to meet him, he's, like I said, he's, he's a truly good dude. But there's a lot of good guys in this business. I mean, there I haven't are. met a bad guy yet. I really haven't met anybody who I'd say, you know what, that guy's a jerk. You know, I mean, he's just a jerk. Everybody's been super cool. Yeah, but I guess it's also what you put out there, too. You know? I mean, if you go around being a jerk and doing bad things, and bad things and jerks are probably what you're going to attract. Yeah. So, no, I think I just you try can, to do as good as I can. I think you get together, right? You you feel like you're on, you're the top of the world, you're the pinnacle in your area, and you start meeting these guys from all around the country, and you realize like you're just a this one little tiny cog in the entire machine oh. that is the the flooring industry, and you realize like you're really not that important. It doesn't matter if you're turning out like <laughs> award winning photos and stuff like that and award winning floors. 
you really are you're just a floor guy and whether you know you're you're making the floor of the year or you're getting a dollar 25 a square foot to do a really bad job and put one coat of poly down like we're we're all kind of in the same machine and we're not really any better than the, than the next guy and we just we all need to work together and and make the industry better for all of us exactly right and we need to reach out more we all need to reach mm-hmm. out more i can't stress that enough we all need to reach out to those that that are posting some of this stuff you know there was a guy who posted something a while back about running a big machine and he started getting beat up and i felt like i might have jumped on there for a second but you know he got defensive and i answered back with, look you know i'm sorry but you know i just you know, I'm in your area. If if you want me to help, if you want any need any assistance or anything else, you know, don't have to figure it on your own. Just give me a call. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And not that he'll ever call me, but just the fact that I did that, you know what I mean, it made me feel better than me going and bashing on somebody. You know what I mean about a job that they're doing. So yeah, I would just encourage everybody to do that. Everybody to reach out. Or you make a silly comment or a smart comment, which we're all guilty of. We've all done it. Correct. I've done it. Just you know, say hey, man. You know, uh, you know. This, you know, I just did a big machine challenge on on social media because you know I was seeing a lot of bad big machine work, and I was like, if I challenge these guys, and the good guys would get on here and be like, oh, you ain't nothing, check this out, yeah. And that way, the guys who didn't know could learn, you know. So, it's just about making it fun, but you know, reach out, you correct. Know, let yeah. people know that you're there. Let people know you're there to help, and not there to compete, but you're there to help. Well, and look, a lot of these people they come in these groups and they sit there and they they stalk forever, right? They're just watching from the mm-hmm. peripheral to gain mm-hmm. the the knowledge, and then they jump in and they ask a question. Maybe they really did join that day and they asked that they asked the question, and it's been asked a hundred times before. And then everybody jumps on and starts saying, "I can't believe you'd ask such a stupid question. Why would you do that?" Da 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 da. You don't know where they're coming from, and you were them at one point. Take mm-hmm. the time either. S- Either ignore it because you don't want to deal with it and it's been posted 5,000 other times or take the time to answer them with a genuine answer because they're asking because they need to know. They're not asking uh-huh. because they they they, had, they didn't know it's been posted 5,000 times. Nobody uses the search function, okay? No one's going to search for their question. <laughs> they're just going to ask it because it's easier. So mm-hmm. just answer it nicely or move on and we're going to be in a lot better position. Yeah, exactly. That we we've done a real good job at the Real Masters of of doing that. Of of you know, most of the guys on there, they're professional and they're like I said, they're very curious and very respectful. So we get a lot of that. But you know, there are there are some members of thousands and thousands of members. So you're, when you have that big of a role, you're going to have you know, I mean, you can't you can't control that many guys. There's mm-hmm. no way. You can't have two three thousand people and then you know the four installers of America do a good job of it, but. You know, Kim Ballin's exceptional with the way they run that group. But it's, you know, it's like I said, you just, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta be professional and you mm-hmm. gotta be professional online because you never know what's going to happen in your career. I mean, I've talked to people before and said, hey, you know, you might not want to say that because you might need a job with one of these companies one day. You know, yeah. you might blow out your knee. You might, well, you know, you might blow out your hand. You might get something where you can't do this, but yet you still want to stay a part of it. Well, you haven't been a jerk to have the industry, so nobody's when you go to get a job, they're going to be like, I don't want that guy around here. You yep. know what I mean? But yep. If you're the guy who's always willing to help and always willing to reach out and your work's decent, you know what I mean, you're trying to evolve, then those companies are going to be like, hey, you know, this guy, you know, let's give him a shot. So it's all about your future, and it's all about where you want to take it. Hardwood, you get exactly what you put in back out. So... If you're willing to put in the time and you're willing to put in the karma to be a good person, then I guarantee you, you'll you'll get good things out of this trade. You really will. I agree. I think a lot of you know it's like kids, right? My my 11 year old son and my eight and a half year old daughter they don't under they don't have foresight, right? They can't think two weeks in the future, let alone five minutes in the future. So once again, you got to bring respect back to the trades by respecting it yourself. So don't go run in your mouth in these groups about stuff that's going to piss people off because like you said, you might need to become a rep one day and no one's going to put up with you if you're out there trashing everybody. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you gotta no. think, think in, in advance, right? You can't install floors forever. I don't know anybody that has, or at least done it like, well and and not well, been broken down yeah. well clayton the guy that was teaching me he was out there with patent leather black leather shoes on cut off slacks and a wife beater at 89 
still wow. standing floor. So wow. you can go pretty good long ways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's actually still with us in his hunter. He's like 101 right now. So he's, yeah, he's still kicking it, but he's the exception. There's not, most guys in this industry, they, they don't wear a mask. They don't treat, they don't take care of themselves. They don't take care of themselves and they end up with, you know, you know, issues caused by, you know, the trade. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it is dangerous. I mean, chemicals and stuff like that, dangerous. But and especially back in the day, we used chemicals that were so strong that you'd leave a house at home and say, hey, maybe you want to sit on the porch for an hour and sober up before you head home, you know, because we would just be, you know, more Man. secure and everything else and no mask. And, you know, they wouldn't provide us with masks or gloves. I had companies for 15, 18 years that wouldn't even buy me gloves to stay with. We'd have to dip our hand in the bucket and go to town. So the first time I saw a company that had gloves, I was like, wow, check this out. This is awesome. So, hmm. you know, it's a, a lot of guys didn't make it. But we're like I said, we're, we're moving it forward as a as a trade. And, yeah. you know, the guys now are taking it's, you know safety very seriously. A lot of these companies, I feel, are taking, you know, safety very seriously. Uh, here in Georgia, you know, we can buy 100-gallon drums of moisture if you wanted to. So, you know, unfortunately, our you know, government's not trying to help keep us safe. But, you know, we have... Uh, Good practices, you know. The yeah. more knowledge people have, you know, the, the better they're going to be. But yes, yeah, definitely, does. it's a dangerous trade if you if you don't treat it right and you're not careful. Sure, can be. They, I mean, yeah. then that's like not that's ignoring the saws and the and the giant equipment, just the chemicals that you deal with and the and the sawdust and all of that. Like it's it's bad enough. You don't even need to get into like mm-hmm. possibly losing a finger. So. I get it. And I'm with you. I think a lot of companies are realizing, you know, there's a investment to be made, right? Like one, there's, there's liability issues, but that aside, I just want somebody to be able to enjoy their life down the road. I, I, you know, I would Uh like to be able to run around with grandkids one day. So why would I not want somebody else? Right. So I have the equipment there. I have earmuffs. I have the knee pads, gloves, whatever, whatever they want. And I say, here it is. You need to use this stuff, but if you don't, it's on you and don't come back at me because I offered it to you and I'll, I'll walk by and I'll be like, Hey, you really do need to have your earmuffs on when they're like using tools and things. And they're like, Oh, okay, I'll go get them. And I, you know, you gotta kind of, you just gotta nag people when they, when they're new, when they start, I think, and, and get them in that habit because you don't always think about it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a company that I do some work with now. I, I can't subcontract a little bit from this company here and there and they, uh, he gives out a safety kit, and he's the only one, like I said, in the 30 years I've been doing this, he actually gives the guys a safety kit with, you know, your ear stain, ear protection, hair protection, you know, all that good stuff. And, and that, that's that been a lot to me to see somebody doing that. So because, you know, it, like, it, it can be done is where I'm at with that. So that's what we do now, too. We we try to be safe. But with duffel staining equipment, like I said, and water base finishes, it's getting better. They're, they're looking mm-hmm. out for us. The industry's looking out for us, and I appreciate that. It's come a long way in a short time. You know, I've only, I've been in it five years and I've seen a ton of changes in five years. So in, you know, your 30 years, I can only imagine the changes you've seen and where we'll continue to go. As long as the robots don't start doing it, we're going to be okay. Yeah, I think we're good with the robots for a while because you're still going to have somebody bring the robot to the house and set it up and everything else. So I think there's always going to be a place. <laughs> but yeah, if they could just make a bigger scene without a cord on it and a buffer without a cord on it, I would be I would be golden. Mm-hmm. So I'd absolutely love it. You better start Batter talking to Milwaukee. Salt contained dust containment systems. You know what I mean? It's just something. So yeah, well, make just, it easier. But just... no, it, it, the advances are great, and the, the industry has really come a long ways. And I think a lot of that's due to, to things like Facebook and social media, where guys are starting to hold some of the accountability with some of these companies. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Guys are able to go and blast them, and you know, be like, but you know, it, but it's and then companies like Norton are, are coming out with just all of these amazing product lines that I've never seen in, in my life. It was always just basic sandpaper. You know what I mean? Carbide or ceramic, and then now it's just there's all different types for all different situations. And if, is a is the sander is a lifelong sander. It's it's such a good time to be alive with all this <laughs> new stuff coming out. It really is it's such a good time. It's just so much easier, huh? Yeah, oh man, easier yeah. and just yeah, just easier, cleaner, better product, less work. You know, you're there home. You you're not. You're not out sand floors at eight nine o'clock at night trying to get stain all on your, you know. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. it's just better. And as long as we can keep moving forward, then I will I will stay with it. Yeah. Whenever we do not, whenever we start falling back, you can believe me, I will be a very loud voice saying we need to get back to business. And as long as we all do that, we'll be good. I agree. 
Well, Lori, sadly, we have we, we are at our, our time limit here, but I, I think we, uh, I don't know what we covered. We covered a lot. We covered a, a wide range of things, and I think we have some good outlooks and interesting perspectives in there. So uh, awesome. if anybody wants to well, reach Kyle, out to you, well, so if anybody wants to reach out to you, where can they find you? Um, they can get me at um, 678-770-6294, my cell phone number. Um, you can reach me on Facebook. I'm on all the major flooring groups for the most part. Um, Instagram, I mean, really anywhere. Just, you know, I'm not hard to find. I'm everywhere. So <laughs> I'm a social media, you know, floozy, so I'm all over the place. Awesome. But, but Kyle, I, let me say it too, but thanks to you for doing this, man. This is, you know. Like I said, to hear some of these guys that, you know, we look at and we see their work and we wonder, man, I wonder what that guy's all about. To actually put a voice to it is um, it's, it's really cool. So, and I can't thank you enough. So we appreciate you. No, thank you very much. It means a lot to me. I'm uh, like you. I'm a, I'm a nobody. I'm just out here doing my thing. So yeah. I'm glad guys are enjoying it and uh, hopefully it, yeah. you know, makes a difference over time. But uh, I appreciate right. you just taking time out of a, uh, out of your day for me and um uh, I'm sure we will we will talk again soon. Make sure you get into the real ma- the the real hardwood floor masters group. Join that. Get your floor submitted by twelve thirty one, and they'll be voted on at the beginning of January. So you could win that sweet prize pack that's out there, and uh, just join a good group of guys that are uh, looking out for the industry. Really, absolutely. So. Thanks so much, Cal. Have a good day. You too. Bye. That's all the time we have for this week. To keep the conversation going, head on over to the Floor Academy Facebook group. Be sure to subscribe so you can hear each and every episode. We can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and most major podcast directories. Don't forget to leave a review and let us know what you think about the show. If you would like to be a guest, have questions or feedback, you can email us at FloorAcademyPodcast at gmail.com. You can help support the show by becoming a patron over at www.patreon.com slash floor academy remember to learn well you earn